For several days, a large werewolf has been scaring the residents here. You know that the werewolf has a wife, and she's the only person who can calm the monster down and help him return to his human form. You have found three girls. Each of them might be the werewolf's wife you're looking for. You ask his wife to approach him, but none of the girls admits she's the one you need. So, you have to make your own choice. Do you see some wool on the girl's clothes? It's the wolf's fur, which means she's the wife. She walks up to the monster, hugs it, and the werewolf turns into a human. You're hungry. You drop by a pizzeria. The owner of the restaurant says that someone has taken all his weekly earnings from the safe. The thief wore gloves and left no fingerprints. The video cameras were turned off. You know this pizzeria has had several similar incidents over the past year. Every time, the insurance company paid the owner the entire amount that had been stolen. You're sure the owner took his own money to use the insurance again. Take a look at the office and prove that the owner is guilty. Look at the air vent. Behind the grated hatch, you can see the bundles of the stolen money you've been looking for. Suddenly, someone shoved Stacy into the water. Down in the Sea Kingdom, Stacy met Neptune. He was sitting on his throne, surrounded by three mermaids. Neptune asked Stacy to return the pearl necklace to his wife. She had recently lost it, and Luke found the necklace on the shore. Can you guess which mermaid is Neptune's wife? The third one. She's the only one who's wearing an engagement ring. When Stacy gave the necklace to its rightful owner, Neptune snapped his fingers. His guards brought Luke. Neptune said, I'll let you go home safely, but you have to choose the right door. There were demons behind the first door. They were ready to eat anyone who dared to come in. There was lava all over the floor of the room behind the second door. And finally, there was a laser beam that could cut through anything it touched behind the third door. Which door should Stacy and Luke choose? The third one. They can crawl under the beam without touching it. You were in a hurry and forgot to lock the apartment door while leaving. Someone got in and locked the door from the inside, and you had to use the key to open it. You see a human silhouette standing in the shadows and realize that you know this person. Who is it? It's the woman who asked you to help her brother. She was wearing a red bracelet. The silhouette has the same accessory. I came here to thank you in person. The door was open, but you weren't at home, the woman says. A mysterious biologist invites you to his home for dinner. He takes you down to the basement and puts three plates of weird items on the table. One has wild mushrooms with white gills. The second is filled with castor beans. The third has some fish brains. Which one is safe to eat? The plate of fish brains is the only dish that isn't poisonous. Someone got into Matthew's house during a severe rainstorm and took a lot of expensive stuff. The man called the police. They came over and started to interview the neighbors. Nicole said she lived alone and worked from home. She was inside the whole day. Jerry explained he was a chef in an Italian restaurant. He came back from work only half an hour ago. Sophia told the police she hadn't left home because she was ill. Who was the intruder? It was Nicole. She claimed that she'd been inside the entire day, but there was a wet umbrella in the corner. Kim and Ashley are best friends. They decided to spend summer vacation in Italy together. They were very lucky to buy cheap plane tickets. Their flight was at 10 a.m. Unfortunately, when the girls arrived at the airport, they realized it was the wrong one. Now, they have two options. To take a high-speed train for $100 to go to the right airport or stay here and buy tickets for a later flight for $400. What should they choose? The second option. Look at the clock on the wall. It's 9.55 a.m. 
the boarding for their flight is already over. They won't make it even if they take a high-speed train. Kim and Ashley bought new tickets. They went to the airport restaurant to drink coffee. But one weird detail scared Kim away. She suggested they should leave that place as soon as possible. What did Kim see? This woman over there is a zombie. Wow! How did she get through security? When it was time to finally board the plane, it turned out there were no more economy class seats left. Kim and Ashley were offered to fly in business class. There, the girls saw three people. When the flight attendant served them fresh juice, she whispered that Kim and Ashley were extremely lucky. They were about to travel next to a famous Italian billionaire. Can you guess which of these passengers is the billionaire? This glamorous lady is a good candidate. But it's very unlikely a billionaire will wear a 100% polyester coat. This guy's business suit is very elegant, but look at his shoes. They seem quite cheap and worn out. This funny gentleman must be the real billionaire. Although his outfit is rather casual, his gold watch looks very expensive. Once, a bank was robbed. The police suspected that one of the bank's security guards had helped the criminals. Detective Justin had to question three of them. The first security guard told him he had heard some shouting and rushed there, but by the time he arrived, the criminals had already been gone. The second security guard explained he had been drinking a cup of coffee at that moment and hadn't even heard anything. And the third guard said he had run after the thieves, but he had to lace his boots. Without a second thought, he crouched near an emergency exit. At that very moment, the door opened and hit him on the head. When he came back, the criminals had been gone. Justin immediately understood which guard was guilty. Who was it? It was the third guard. All emergency doors open outwards for safety reasons. The police have been looking for Kyle for two days. The guy went hiking and never came back. Finally, he was found. Someone had hit him on the head and left him lying in the bushes. Kyle only managed to say, friend, in a weak voice, and lost consciousness. The police officers had three suspects, all of them Kyle's friends. Zachary said he spent the last days at work getting ready for a conference. Jesse told the detective he'd sprained his ankle and had been in bed for four days. And Billy explained he'd been to New York for business. The man even showed the police officers his boarding pass. Who's behind the accident with Kyle? Police immediately noticed that Billy had showed just one boarding pass. Then how did he get back from New York? His story sounds fishy. Uh-oh. Tommy was exploring old caves outside the city when he got trapped in a mysterious dungeon. There were three ways out, but only one of them was safe. Behind the first door, a fire was raging. Behind the second door, there was acid rain which could melt any substance within seconds. Behind the third door, there was a huge brown bear that hadn't eaten for two years. Which way should Tommy choose? Tommy should choose the third way. No animal can go for two years without food and survive. Barely. <laughs> it was a stormy day and it had been raining for several hours straight. A car accident happened in a tunnel. The yellow car crashed into the red one. The driver of the yellow car said it had been raining so heavily he hadn't seen anything. So, the accident wasn't totally his fault, but the police asked the man to stop lying and claimed it was all his fault. Why? The accident happened in the tunnel. It couldn't be raining there. Mrs. Cabell is the owner of a small company producing expensive designer cups. On Friday, when the working week was finally over, she got a call from her bank. The woman found out that someone had stolen all the money she had saved. Mrs. Cabell realized it must have been one of her workers. So, she asked each of them what they had been doing that day. Sloan, a sales manager, said she'd been talking to their clients and looking for new ones. Atticus, a potter, said that he always made one cup a day, and he showed all the cups he had done that week. Sierra, a designer, said that she'd been working. 
but also admitted she hadn't really been productive that day because of some family issues. Who lied? Atticus, there are five working days in the regular week. The man said he made one mug a day, but he only showed four mugs. It means he missed one day of work. There was an incident in a secret laboratory. One of the scientists released a substance that turned people into vampires. Detective Reed arrived at the scene to interview three witnesses. The first scientist, Michael, said, I stopped by the lab this morning to pick up some notes. The machines were working just fine, and I didn't see anyone. I took the papers and left. The second scientist, Lindsay, said, I closed the lab at night. One of the PCs was faulty, but I was very tired and decided to leave it till the morning. Unfortunately, I overslept. And the third scientist, Jennifer, said, I got up early and went to the lab to check the devices. No one seems to have entered the room. I fixed one of the computers and left. Which one of them was lying? Michael is lying. One of the computers was actually faulty, and Jennifer spent the whole morning fixing it. If Michael had walked into the lab, he would have known about it, or Jennifer would have noticed him. So he must have entered the lab after the others had already left. But why would someone release such a dangerous substance? Michael didn't want to confess, so Detective Reed decided to investigate the crime scene to find out who was behind this. Take a look at this picture. Is there anything suspicious? It looks like Michael dropped an ID card. And look, it doesn't belong to him. The name on the card is George Wilson. Let's ask him about the incident. Detective Reed went to Mr. Wilson's office to ask him about the incident. Oh yeah, I gave my pass to Michael, Mr. Wilson said. But that's only because I had left something in the lab. My glasses. I didn't have time, so I asked Michael to pick them up. Well, that's not a very clever excuse, but how can you prove the man is lying? There's an open glasses case on the table, and the glasses are inside. But Mr. Wilson, didn't you say that you left them in the lab? Oh, did I say my glasses? Sorry, I meant my papers. I made this mistake because I asked my secretary Shirley to look for my glasses yesterday. Find something to prove Mr. Wilson is lying. There's a calendar on Shirley's desk. Yesterday was her day off. It's marked red. Mr. Wilson is lying. Mr. Wilson was arrested, but people have already begun to turn into vampires. Can you guess who's actually a vampire? The woman on the right. She's putting on her makeup, but do you see? She isn't reflected in the mirror. Meanwhile, those who haven't turned into vampires gather everything they might need to survive. Which of these people is more likely to stay alive? All these supplies won't protect the guy on the right from vampires. As for the girl on the left, she's stocked up on what she can to defeat the vampires. She has a higher chance of survival. Let's check out the subway. There are two women here. Which of them is not pregnant? The girl on the left is not pregnant. Look, her belly is of a very strange shape. That's because she has hidden her survival supplies under her clothes. Vampires decided to throw a party. Who among those present is actually an undercover human? The guy on the left is a human. He's wearing makeup and false teeth. Nikki is also trying to survive. She packs her things and decided to move to a neighboring town. But suddenly, a vampire charged at her car. He damages the vehicle and takes away some supplies. Fortunately, he doesn't manage to bite Nikki. She escapes. 
Nikki has to stay home. The next day, a young man knocks on her door and asks for help. Is it okay to let him in? Nope. He has the same scar on his cheek like the vampire from the day before. Nikki continues to hide at home. One day, some girl starts knocking on her back door. Please help! A pack of vampires is chasing me! Nikki opens the door. The girl is out of breath. But she manages to say, They're almost here. Can I come in? Is it safe to let her in? No! This girl is a vampire. Anyone in this situation would immediately run inside the house, but vampires can't come in without an invitation. Nikki was checking her house and suddenly noticed that there was someone in the attic. She approached the shadows. It was a father and daughter. Please don't kick us out. Sorry, we snuck in without permission. We've been trying to hide from the vampires. The father said, is it safe to let them stay? Yes, firstly, they're sitting in the sun, but their skin seems to be okay. Secondly, they managed to enter the house without an invitation. That means they're humans. Nikki let them stay. Let's take a little break. Time for some quick riddles. Think fast. A vampire lived in a one-story black cottage. He had a black cat, a black fish, a black computer, a black armchair, a black desk, and a black phone. Everything was black. What color was the staircase? There was no staircase in that house because it was a one-story cottage. Three vampires are walking fast. The first vampire says, Two other vampires are walking behind me. The second one says, one vampire is walking behind me, and one is walking in front of me. And the third one says, Two vampires are walking in front of me, and two are walking behind me. How is that possible? These vampires are walking in circles. Humans, vampires, and werewolves gathered in one mansion. There are as many werewolves as there are vampires. There are as many vampires as there are humans. How many creatures are there if three of them are werewolves? There are nine creatures in the mansion, three werewolves, three vampires, and three humans. Now let's go back to Nikki and her adventures. Nikki, Peter, and his daughter Becky decided to go to another town together. It takes two days to get there. They drove all day until night fell. Now they have three options. First, they can continue driving until the morning, despite the fact that they may meet a lot of vampires along the way. Second, they can spend the night in the nearest cave with bats. And third, they can sleep in the car. Which option would be the safest for them? Sleeping in the car is a bad idea. Vampires can sneak up on them in the middle of the night. A night in a cave is also a bad option. Vampires can hide among these bats. The safest option is to keep driving. Although they'll probably meet vampires, they have a chance to survive if they drive faster. They drove really fast and managed to reach the city by the morning. But when they got out of the car, they discovered they were surrounded by vampires. To escape, they need to choose one of three roads. On the first road, there's a pack of vampires. They're coming straight at the guys. There are wild hogs on the second road. The third road leads through a dark alley with hundreds of bats. Which of these three ways is the safest? The second way is the best option because the sun illuminates it, so vampires can't follow Nikki and her new friends. Plus, these dogs don't look too unfriendly. 
The guys reach three stores. Now they need to decide which of the stores is safe to enter. Nikki, Peter, and Becky look through the windows to see what's inside. The first store is empty, but it seems to be full of traps. The second store is full of survivors, but they look dangerous. And the third store seems empty as well, but it's completely dark there, and you can't see anything except for dozens of bats. Where should Nikki lead her friends? The first store is the safest. If Nikki, Peter, and Becky notice these traps, then the chances are high they'll be able to avoid them. It's worth a try. There's a man in the city who's trying to survive by hiding among vampires. Nikki spent a week photographing vampires to figure out who he was. Will you be able to see who is actually human in these photos? You can see this man has all four photos. In one of the photos, he's eating garlic bread. And in this one, his leg is exposed to the sun. He's only pretending to be a vampire. Nikki and the others decided to invite this man to join their group. The man was delighted and said that his name was Douglas. He was a journalist looking for safe places for people. He suggested creating a password that only humans could figure out. They came up with this one. H-A-W-U-H can you guess why? If you look at the reflection of this word in the mirror, you will see HUAN, or H-U-W-A-N. Flip the letter W and you get the word HUMAN. But only those who get reflected in the mirror will be able to solve this puzzle. Nikki and her friends settle down in this town. Can you guess which of these houses belongs to Nikki? In which Peter and Becky live? And in which Douglas has chosen? House number one belongs to Peter and Becky. There are two bicycles next to it. House number two belongs to the journalist. Do you see his equipment? And the remaining house, house number three, belongs to Nikki. Whose wife is a vampire? This guy's wife is a vampire because she only came to the party after sunset. Whose husband is a werewolf? The girl on the left is sweeping up her cat's hair. See? There's a cat in the background. Meanwhile, there are scratches on the floor and walls in the house of the girl on the right. And this shoe has a torn front. Her husband must be a werewolf. Whose wife is actually a ghost? The woman on the right is wearing a ghost costume. It's Halloween. But the woman on the left is a real ghost because we can't see her legs under the sheet. Whose husband is actually a zombie? The man on the left is just sick. The man on the right is a zombie because he's the only one who doesn't eat human food and has an empty plate. Water lilies grow on the lake. Every day, their number doubles. The lilies will completely cover the entire surface of the lake in 48 days. How many days will it take them to cover half of the lake? Forty-seven days. You see, every day the number of the water lilies doubles. On day 48, the lake will be completely covered with lilies. It means that on day 47, there will be twice as few lilies as on day 48. Jack noticed that someone regularly ruins his lawn. He decided to install a hidden camera and figure out who approached his house most often. After four days, he decided to check the footage and immediately realized who the culprit was. Can you guess who it is? Jack's neighbor Karen ruins his lawn. 
She's present in all the photos, but she tries to disguise herself so that she can't be recognized. A woman didn't have her driver's license with her. She didn't stop at a railroad crossing when the barrier was lowered. Then, ignoring the stop sign, she moved in the wrong direction along a one-way street and stopped only after passing three intersections. Traffic police officers, seeing all this, decided not to interfere. Why? The woman first traveled by train and then walked. Mary is trying to enter an ice castle to save her friend Logan, but there's a combination lock on the gate. Luckily, there's a clue carved on the ice. Here it is. 162. One number is correct and in the right place. 842. Two numbers are correct but in the wrong place. 526. Nothing is correct. Can you guess the code? The passcode is 184. First, we exclude 2 and 6, since in 526, no number is correct. In 842, two numbers are correct, so two of the numbers we need are 8 and 4. The last number must be 1, and since 1 is in its place, we can easily figure out where 8 and 4 must go. Mary opens the gate and enters the castle. She walks down an icy corridor and comes across three doors. There is a severe snowstorm behind the first door. In the second room, there's a dangerous snow dragon. And behind the third door, there's a lake covered with a layer of dark blue ice. Which door should Mary choose? The dragon is a definite no-no. The dark blue ice is thin and unsafe. Mary is likely to just fall into the lake. The first door is the best option. Mary crosses the room and finds herself in a long corridor. The Ice Queen's monsters start chasing her. The girl runs down the hallway and sees another three doors made of clear ice. There's a magical snow parrot in the first room. The second room is filled with water. And there's a small black room behind the third door. It looks more like a locker. Which door should Mary hide behind to avoid being found? The Ice Queen's parrot behind the first door will scream when it sees Mary. The third door is a bad option because the doors are made of clear ice, so the monsters will spot her immediately. The second door is the best option. Mary swims away and finds herself in a big hall. She sees Logan, and they're about to run away together when the Ice Queen captures them in a cage. There are three levers next to the cage, and the Ice Queen gives Mary these hints. The first lever is going to open the cage, but they'll fall into a freezing cold underground lake. The second lever will open all the cages in the castle and release all the monsters that are inside. The third lever will open the cage, but only one person will be able to get out. What should the guys do? They should pull the third lever and let Logan out. After that, they should pull the first lever. Mary will fall into the water, but Logan will help her get out of the lake. John decided to make a vegetable salad for his friends. To prepare for it, he will need three peppers and the same number of tomatoes. And he needs fewer cucumbers than tomatoes, but more than radishes. How many different vegetables will John use in the salad? Nine point three peppers, three tomatoes, two cucumbers, and one radish. A professor went to have his lunch break, leaving three students in the lecture hall. When he returned, he realized that an answer sheet for an important exam had disappeared from his desk. He questioned the students. Kyle said, Ten minutes after you'd left, my mom called me and asked me to meet with her near the college building. When I returned, the sheet was already gone. Brian said, no one called Kyle. He took something from your desk and left. And Ryan said, Brian is telling the truth. When we realized that it was an answer sheet, we ran after him outside, but he had already left. Who should the professor believe? Ryan and Brian are lying. 
They said they had run after Kyle outside, but it was raining, and they're both dry. Which of these artists is suspicious? The girl on the right has been using orange paint, not red. Then why do her clothes have red stains? Who is suspicious at this party? The second girl marked this glass to know which of them contained poison. Which of these students is suspicious? Student 3 only pretends to be writing. He's actually reading a magazine. Which of these women is suspicious? The woman on the right is only pretending to be pregnant. A prince married a simple girl and brought her to the palace. His mother, the queen, didn't like it at all. She started watching the girl and discovered that she secretly took some jewelry out of the palace and hid it in the ground under an oak tree. The queen immediately went to the prince and told him about it. The prince checked under the oak tree and actually found the jewels. His wife started begging him, My prince, I swear, I didn't steal it for myself. I'm leaving the jewelry here so that my family can pick it up later. But the queen said, She's lying to you. She hides the jewelry here because she wants to sell it when she runs away from the palace. Who's lying? The girl's lying. No one forbids her to visit her family or give them whatever they need openly. She hides it because she'll need the money after running away. John had a lunch break, so he went to the butcher to buy some meat. He asked the butcher to cut the meat in a specific way. The butcher asked if John was a firefighter. John said yes. How did the butcher guess John's profession? John was still wearing his uniform when he went on his lunch break. Mary went to the forest to pick some berries and mushrooms. Sometime later, the girl realized she had gotten lost. Suddenly, she heard the trees crackling behind her back. There was a monster approaching! Mary ran as fast as she could and managed to get away from the monster. She saw a small house and went inside. An elderly lady lived in the house. She said she would help Mary, but Mary immediately realized that this lady was a shapeshifter. She was the monster in the forest! How did Mary know that? Have you noticed that the elderly woman has the same symbol on her hand as the monster had? Luckily, it turned out that the woman was not actually evil. She helped Mary to get out of the forest. The elderly lady from the forest has three cats. Snowball, Bella, and Lisa. They usually sleep on three different pillows, yellow, pink, and blue. Bella likes sleeping on the pink pillow. Snowball never chooses either pink or blue. Think about it and try to guess which pillow each of the cats sleeps on. Bella sleeps on the pink pillow. Snowball lies on the yellow one. And Lisa sleeps on the blue one. Now it's time to think fast. Why is Santa Claus so good at karate? Because he has a black belt, duh. What bear has no teeth? Marmalade bear. How can you make a rattlesnake cry? Take the rattle away. Can you spot something odd in this image? Yep, this little guy is just a wannabe. Will you be able to find the fork that's different from the rest?
Here it is. Its tines are way shorter than those of its fellow forks. How long will it take you to find the glove that doesn't have a pair? But of course, here it is. Wow, that was fast. Now let's make it trickier. Which snowflake is lonely? Exactly, this pretty one in the center. Try to spot the rubber boot that doesn't have a pair. Here it is. You must have an eagle eye. Is there an imposter among all these X's? Yup, it's the letter Y. Have you just pressed the hard mode button? Okay, which lion is different from the rest? Right, this king of the jungle is missing one ear. Can you spot a sunflower among all these buzzing bees? Ah, here it is, hiding in the corner. Which avocado is different from the rest? This one. Look at its stone. It must be in love. What's your bet? Is it Ava or Kado? And now the real game starts. You see most of these logos every day, but how well do you really know them? Do you recognize the logo of the world-famous producer of electronics? The left one looks much more natural, and no wonder it's the correct logo. How often do you order stuff from Amazon? Let's see. If you pick the right logo, it must be often enough. What a tricky task! These logos look almost the same. And still, the correct one is the Netflix logo on the right. Think hard and tell me, where could you get a yummy sandwich? The correct logo is the one on the right. If you see the other one, you should probably refrain from entering that subway. Now, which is the correct YouTube logo? No cheating! The left one, of course. Which car do you use to pay at your local supermarket? The one on the right, of course. I'm sure this logo is familiar not only to avid coffee fans. The left one is the real Starbucks logo. Who hasn't seen a room of their dreams in IKEA at least once in their life? But which is the correct IKEA logo? It's the right one. Now tell me, how many hours do you spend watching TikTok videos? If you answered that the real TikTok logo is the one on the right, you probably open the TikTok app at least once a day. 
one of the best snacks out there, but which Pringles logo is the one you see on the box? The mustache guy doesn't have that much hair. The logo on the left is correct. Level up! Which of these guys do you see when you buy your Pringles? Absolutely! It's the one on the left. Let's see if you tend to take pics of literally everything around you to post them on this social media app. The real Instagram logo is the right one. Heh, <laughs> you must be a real Insta person if you got that right. I'm sure you'll recognize the Pizza Hut logo in no time. Yes, you pizza lover. And of course, it's the one on the left. Okay, we've determined that you're a real fan of pizza, but how about sports? The correct Adidas logo is on the left. And how extreme is your sweet tooth? Will you recognize the real Chupa Chups logo? I knew it was the one on the right. Which of these is the real IBM logo? That was a tricky question. I chose the logo on the right, and it was the right choice. How about this seemingly endless source of knowledge and wisdom? What's the real Wikipedia logo? Yep, it's the one on the left. If you watch MTV often enough, it won't take you long to find its real logo. Yep, it's the right one. How about these logos? Tricky, huh? The real Costa Coffee logo is the one on the right. Now, this question is the trickiest of them all. Which is the correct bright side logo? Huh? I hope you watch our channel often enough to have picked the light bulb on the right. And, you know, always stay on the bright side of life. And level up! Look at the pictures attentively and try to figure out what's wrong with them. Can you find out what's wrong in this picture? Ah, it's not about the numbers. It's the word mistake that's written incorrectly. Can you spot something really strange in this image? It's a barn. Why would it need a chimney? Examine all the details in this picture and figure out what's wrong with it. Oh, I see. The car doesn't have any license plate. Something is off in this picture. But what exactly? This one seems tough. April 31st? Hmm, such a date doesn't exist. How fast can you figure out what's wrong with this picture? The guy must have been dressing in a hurry. 
He's wearing one regular skate and one roller skate. Which picture is the odd one here? The one with a cat. All other items begin with the letter B, except the kitty. I gotta warn you, be very, very attentive now. Can you find the mistake? Look at this symbol. It's not a zero, it's an O. Oh. If you cracked even 70% of these attention riddles, you're a very, very attentive individual. Now, what was that number again? Suddenly, somebody pushed Stacy into the water. Down in the Sea Kingdom, Stacy met Neptune. He was sitting on his throne, surrounded by three mermaids. Neptune asked Stacy to return the pearl necklace to his wife. He had recently lost it, and Luke found the necklace on the shore. Can you guess which mermaid is Neptune's wife? The third one. She's the only one who's wearing an engagement ring. Another working day at the chocolate factory. Jason decided to prank Freddy and covered a raw chicken egg with a layer of chocolate. Then he wrapped it and put it among real chocolate eggs on a tray. When Jason brought the chocolate eggs, Freddy spotted the fake one immediately. Can you figure out how? The real chocolate eggs are hollow inside, so they were rolling all over the tray when Jason was walking. But the raw egg is heavier, and it didn't move much. Mm. What about the dressing room? Any odd details? These hairy clawed paws can't belong to a human. Next, Bella decided to visit a hairdresser. The manager asked her to wait for 20 minutes. Bella took a seat in the lobby and accidentally fell asleep. When she woke up, she saw that someone had cut her long, beautiful hair. She got furious and questioned three suspects. Maya said that she had been busy with another customer. She didn't see what was going on in the lobby. Rick said that he had been eating his lunch outdoors. And Sally said, Who do you think I am? I don't steal hair. That's ridiculous. Who is lying? Both Maya and Sally had some cut hair on their clothes, but that doesn't prove their guilt. But Rick's lunchbox is full of food, which means he was busy with something else during his lunch break. Very suspicious. Hmm. Bella's evening dress was too long and classy. She couldn't go to the concert hall by subway. So the hostel manager, Fred, offered Bella to give her a ride if she cracked his tricky riddle. I have a neck and no head. Two arms, but no hands. I'm with you at school. I'm with you at work. What am I? The correct answer is a shirt. During a break, Bella went outside to get some fresh air. She enjoyed the evening along with the other guests. Suddenly, a street dealer offered Bella a diamond necklace for $20. What? She agreed right away and put the necklace on. Okay. Soon, three guests came over to Bella to claim the necklace. Pam said, How dare you! This necklace has been in my family for ages. I lost it in the ladies' room. Diana said, This piece looks very similar to my necklace. Someone stole it as I was moving through the crowd today. In any case, my jewelry collection is insured. And Sheila said, I noticed that the necklace was gone after visiting the buffet on the sixth floor. Can you help Bella return the necklace to its real owner? The necklace belongs to Diana. The concert hall doesn't have six floors. Pam and the street dealer have similar tattoos on their arms, so they must be scammers working together. After the performance, Letitia invited Bella to the after party, where Bella met Tyler. He claimed he was a famous violinist 
and showed Bella some pictures proving his luxurious lifestyle. But Bella realized that he was just a wannabe very soon. How did she understand it? Take a look at the trees in this picture. It's obvious that the wind is blowing to the right. Meanwhile, Tyler's hair seems to be swept to the left. The picture has been photoshopped. The next morning, Bella went to buy some groceries. She didn't have much cash, so she bought only two items, cheese and bread, and paid $1.10 in total. The cheese cost $1 more than the bread. How much did the bread cost? The most obvious answer would be that the bread cost 10 cents. But if the bread cost 10 cents and the price of the cheese was $1 higher than that of the bread, the cheese would cost $1.10. And the total, in this case, would be $1.20. The correct answer is that the bread costs 5 cents and the cheese costs $1.05. This indeed makes a total of $1.10. Does that make sense? I mean, sense? Freddy decided to pay Jason back. He dressed up as a ghost to scare him. But suddenly, several real ghosts appeared in the room. Can you figure out which of these ghosts is Freddy? This guy over there! He's the only ghost who is not transparent at all. One evening, the factory was celebrating its anniversary. The management organized a party. All employees participated in a karaoke competition. Most of them all sang incredibly well and received gifts and flowers. But only two of the best singers, Nancy and Betsy, made it to the final. They prepared to face each other in one more round. But suddenly, Betsy fell to the floor, unconscious. Doctors claimed that she had been poisoned. But all the participants of the competition had eaten exactly the same food. Besides, the police checked the dishes, and they were okay. Can you guess what happened? Someone poisoned Betsy's flowers. Next day, Freddy came to work as usual. He looked around and exclaimed, Wait a minute! Who's brought a cat to the chocolate factory? No pets are allowed here. Can you see any animals? Here it is! The cat got scared and ran away to another room. Freddy followed it. Can you spot the cat now? It's hiding over there. And again, Freddy failed to catch the cat. It ran out of the building and hid in the garden. Can you help the guy find the cat? The poor animal is over there. Freddy caught the cat and found a small note attached to its collar. It had contact information. Freddy called the cat owner, but no one answered the phone. So, after work, Freddy took the cat and went to the address mentioned in the note. It was a creepy castle. The door was locked and required a password. Can you help Freddy crack the code using this hint? The password is rainbow. A gloomy old man greeted Freddy inside the castle. Freddy expected that he would thank him for bringing the cat back. But the old man began to laugh evilly and locked all the ways out. Then he said, If you manage to complete three tasks I give you, you will get one million dollars. But if you fail, you'll stay in my castle forever. Here's the first task. Help me find my glasses among all these vegetables. Can you help Freddy? Here they are. The next task from the old man was to cook a potion and do it in the correct order. He gave Freddy this recipe. Can you help the guy? First of all, you gotta put curry. Then go for blueberries to make the potion look greenish. 
And finally, add tomatoes to make the potion look brown. As for these vegetables, Freddy doesn't need them. And the third task is to find a book in this messy room. Can you see it? It's half hidden inside the sofa. Sam was walking in the mountains. He met a beautiful girl and spent the whole day with her. In the evening, he realized he didn't even know her name. He asked if he could take her out the next day. The girl agreed, but only if he guessed her name. Sam was upset. But luckily, the girl liked him too. She wrote something on a piece of paper. It was a hint. Can you figure out her name? Ignore the numbers and look at the letters. Together, they make up the name Regina. Sam rented a cabin on a beautiful deserted beach. He called Regina and invited her over. But she complained that she'd broken her leg. Sam offered his help and invited Regina to stay in his house until she recovered. He brought her to the cabin in his arms like a real gentleman. Yeah. Regina was hungry and asked Sam to go buy some food. When Sam returned, he saw that someone had robbed his house. <gasps> Regina said she had been sleeping and hadn't seen the robbers. Sam called the police and said, I guess my new girlfriend is a thief. Why did he think so? Take a look at the cast. At first, it was on the right leg, but now it's on the left one. The police arrested Regina. They also detained three suspicious men. Jake said that he had been walking with his dog nearby. Bill said that he had been taking pictures for his blog. And Fred said he always surfed on that beach. Can you guess which of them is Regina's accomplice in the robbery? It's Bill. Take a look at his arm. He has a tattoo with Regina's name. 